guys, this is Production Music Live with another tutorial. My name is Francois and today we're going to look at this Ableton project here for Berghain style techno. And you can see we have a track that's roughly seven minutes long in the arrangement view here. And it has a proper intro to mix it into, you know, the track that was playing in the club and can go for like a minute or something and then it has the first mini break here where you should be finished with the track you played before and you have a couple of mid and break parts and a build up and a drop over here and then in this area we have an outro where you can mix into the next track we have a bunch of groups we have our synths playing here and colored pink we have a couple of effects down here, a couple of you know recorded samples and a couple of textures and stuff. And up here we have percussions and here's one or two snares and our kick and bass group is the first thing we're going to take a look at right now. Going to the start here and I'm going to switch off all the other groups for now. Make sure you're on a system that can play bass. So uh, sub speakers or something or very good headphones. This is a little bit about low frequencies here. So we have a main kick playing our uh, sample out of D Premium Volume 2, our sample pack. Uh, the sample is called um, Kick 4 EDM 14. It's one with a longer tail with a bit subby part here in the end. If I solo it completely. So it has this lower tail here. And by the way, if you're interested in getting the sounds we're using in this tutorial, check out the links in the description and feel free to check out our website productionmusiclive.com supporting this channel here. So we have this kick playing typical four to the floor pattern. And you can see we're adding a little bit of saturation here. I'm taking this off. It adds a lot of power basically. So we're using this sample here, Kick 4 EDM. We have a little bit of EQing going on, but nothing that really matters. And we have a bit of saturation here, which actually makes a difference, especially in the loudness of the sample. But this is not like a crazy trick. You could probably also achieve that by just making it louder. So let's move on to the next element here, which is also called kick, but it's doing something different. You can see this one rumbles long. So we are playing the first position. If I'm going into 16s notes, you can see first 16 note is played and then the last two ones are played. And it's the same sample, but we have overdrive on top, we have reverb on top, and then we are cutting off most of the frequencies above 77 hertz. If I undo that. Put on the overdrive put a lot of reverb on top and then cut off all the high noises or the high frequencies and there you go already getting this rolling techno-ish bass line here and let's rename this to kick rolling and then we have another one here. And it's our typical kick reverb, which is playing the same kick sample here. Also in the first position of every measure of one bar. And then you can see dry wet of this reverb up all the way. Switching off the effects to quickly show the difference. We actually have a sidechain to our sidechain channel to make sure we're not interfering with our actual kick.
All right, and let's add in everything after one another. Reverb on top. 1.3 seconds, so kind of a larger room and drive it up all the way. Saturation, overdrive. Now this is really the sound of somebody tearing down their house. Um, Sidechain. Leaving room for our main kick here. And then taming everything by taking off the high frequencies. Add the rolling part back in here. Nice, clean and powerful bass line. So we have this top hi-hat thing here, which we ended up not using. You could add it, but I thought it was okay without it. And Johannes, who actually like set this whole thing up, agreed. He had this in before, but then we were like, yeah, kind of sounds better without it. So we have another one left here. And you see, if we are looking at the patterns, it's just playing in the second position of the fourth measure of one bar. So let's see what it does. Just gives this extra drive in here. And we actually have delay. So we have the same sound again. It's kind of, you know, making everything quite consistent if you're using the same sample and then tweaking the effects differently. We have overdrive again, we have saturation here. And then cutting off a lot, but then we have this ping pong delay here. And a compressor behind that. Now you could argue, why don't you put a sidechain compressor behind it? Well, if you have the feeling it kind of kills your groove, then you should do that. But for some reason, we didn't do it here. Let me quickly check something. Copying the one from that reverb kick here and I'm putting it onto this overdrive kick. Well, we are interfering a little bit, so it might be interesting to keep it. Let's see everything together. Very nice and powerful. So this is our kick and bass group, basically. And then we have some processing on top of the entire group. We have the uh, saturator from the audio effects here called a bit warmer. It's one of the standard presets here. And then we have an EQA just like cleaning up the high frequencies here, not really doing that much of a difference here. But what we have here in the end is a mid-side EQ, making sure we are taking out the sides, in this case below 119 hertz so making sure there's no stereo bass information playing below 120 hertz basically so we make sure if we are playing on a mono sound system we don't get phasing and stuff we don't actually make our bass elements weaker than they should be now we also created a lot of techno kick drums and loops on the way while working on our projects here. So if you're interested, check out our pack PML Techno Kick Drums Volume 1, where you can, you know, get stuff like loops. I think this one should sound more or less like loop 15.
all kinds of stuff in here. And also some chisel. Well, this one actually sounds like something for an Amelie Lens kind of track or Amelie Lens. I actually made a full start to finish techno course, how to, you know, make a techno track in the style of Amelie Lens, just using Ableton Live 10 from start to finish, starting from nothing until we have the finished project. You can also check out the uh, link in the description below. And while we're at it, you can also get this entire Ableton project in a link in the description as well. So zooming out, closing down this group now, let's take a look at what's happening in the percussions group. Turning it on. So mid hi-hat here, it's a standard hi-hat sound, standard hi-hat position. Well, I'm just going on, there's nothing too crazy. So next element, it's kind of a shaker on top. Makes it feel a bit more natural always. And then we have these fast hi-hats. And we try to, you know, get this Burkheim type effect where you almost have the feeling these hi-hats are being reversed. And this is what you can see here. We actually have a closed hi-hat sample and we reversed it and just took this later part here to make it kind of, you know, zip, 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 zip. Something you hear a lot in these typical Burkheim tracks. And below that, we have one of our melodic techno drums loops. Okay, and everything together. I think in a later part we're playing even more. Here we have a bunch of cymbals looped together. This is from our melodic techno drum sample pack, this one here, also available in the description. to just add even more drive. And I think we are playing everything in the drop here. To the left, to the right, something that sounds more reversed. Something that's actually moving from left to right in the spectrum. You can actually see that here. Like most of or all of the one shots are from the premium volume two here. And let's actually quickly take a look at our snares and claps. We kind of didn't use any clap in the actual clap position in this track. It's not really common. These guys use kicks and hi-hats, you know, and they kind of avoid using claps and snares, maybe trying to avoid making it sound too much like house music, for example. It's kind of a different groove. So, unsolo everything and add this group in. So we're using these percussions here to make something interesting. If I'm taking off the ping pong delay. So quite a boring sound actually. And then you put this overdrive on top and then Already more interesting than saturator with a medium curve fully up here at 4.5 decibels. Yeah, what a clean sound already. Ping pong delay. too many high frequencies and down here we're just cleaning it up in the low frequencies for a better and clean mix. 
If you don't do that, for example, if you don't clean it up here on elements like these, what you are going to do is you're going to pile up artifacts from all these sounds. So stuff that's not really needed, but still part of the sound or part of the sample. And it plays in these low frequencies as well and will make your low end and bass frequencies quite muddy. So this is why you always want to clean it up on basically every track that's not playing bass. Okay, what do we have here? Ended up not using it over here. And we have another one here. Okay, that's just an actual snare introducing our main drop here in the back. something is happening with the auto filter frequency. We do have an auto filter somewhere. It's deactivated. Okay. Yeah, I think it wasn't necessary to use it here because we had enough room for lower frequencies. And I think we kind of aren't we doing this on our kicks and bass group actually. Let me quickly check that. Yeah, so we are doing this. We'll be cutting off the lows over time on this group here to make this drop sound more interesting. So you can see the EQ high pass mode is on here and we have Okay, let's actually take a look at our effects group, which is also very interesting. Maybe in this area in front. You see it's almost playing all the time. So it's really generating the general atmosphere here of kind of an industrial object that we are standing inside of or dancing inside of. And we have textures. And we also have noise. This is just random noise. We record it from a sample and then put a, a lot of reverb on top and put it into the back. And this is actually a box recorded. Somebody hit on a box. And then we put reverb on it and this one here as well. Oh, it's a canister. So it's, it's like something where you put your gas into. And what is this? I already forgot. Oh yeah, that's just a clap. You know, a decay time of five seconds, put dry wet up halfway up, and then you can achieve such an like FX background effect. I mean, decay time 20 seconds. This thing is basically lasting forever. And then after a while, we are doing it again.
and then a low cut cleaning up the low frequencies on the entire group of effects. So this is just generating basically our atmosphere for an industrial scenery and let's play it all together what we have so far. So far we are not playing a single synth or you know instrument in the classical sense. We are using drum samples and a bunch of sounds we recorded or claps and stuff. And now we have this synth group here which is actually not the most important element in this track. This track already works well without it. It even feels like it has a specific key because we have a bass sound playing, it's just very low down. So let's put in these synths. So I think what's very interesting here is these two stab sounds. This one combined with the other one. And it's just two instances of massive. It's actually not a crazy sound, it's just a saw wave here playing combined with a square wave and also combined with another saw wave. And then we're sending everything through filter one here, keeping the cutoff quite open. And then on top of that, we have a little bit of reverb, a little bit of delay, but you know, the envelope is shaped in that way. So we don't want too much of decay here, a little bit, and then it rolls off. So more plucky than pad sound, basically. And let me quickly move closer to what we are actually playing. On top we have an overdrive, we have a bit of compression here, we are focusing on this frequency here, and we have sidechain, and an auto filter automating the cutoff frequency up and down. Okay, quickly taking a look at our ARP. Just, you know, this crazy sound. It's a very basic sound. This one is not too important here. It's just like adding into the atmosphere, but I don't know, I don't want to go too much into the sound because it's actually, it's just, you could play almost any wave shape or waveform here. It doesn't really matter if it's a saw wave or a square wave. Or if you close down the cutoff a bit more. This one. This one gives kind of the feeling of a general alert. I think this is a just standard, again, this is somewhere in between a square and a saw wave here. And then we are making sure we are having a filter at the end here. And you can see these are not playing at the same time. And then we have... This is playing every second time. So this is kind of generating this alert kind of feeling.
like something is in constant high tension or something. And we are kind of keeping the tension. You just see the filter curves here. We are kind of bringing it up, making it like building up the tension, then releasing it with heavy beats, for example. Okay, so this is basically our synth part. It's not the craziest synth part, but it works and does its job here. And of course, towards our main drop, we are trying to achieve this sort of fade to gray effect by filtering out the low frequencies, by emphasizing a bit on the higher frequencies and maybe adding in a couple of extra reverbs on top, opening them up, and maybe also a couple of delays that are nicely in sync with our general you know, beat, beat per minute tempo. Actually, we are playing at 128 here. And then after our main drop, we're making sure to get into an outro. And then towards the end, we're trying to remove all the melodic elements that could, you know, interfere with a new track, especially if they are not in the same key. This can get very irritating. That's why we're making sure to only like keep more neutral elements, also in the beginning. All right, so that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this little session here. Feel free to check out our website, Production Music Live, supporting this channel. If you're interested in this template, if you're interested in maybe D Premium sample packs or these kick drums or our melodic techno drum sample pack or this Ableton project here, or maybe a complete start to finish course on making a complete techno track from start to finish only using Ableton 10. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you next time. And let's play a little more of this track.